30 and verse 19. I'll just share two or three things. I have so many of them, but sadly we started late tonight. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19. Let me turn there. I thought we'll have it projected. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19. Verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you, listen carefully, life and death. I have set before you blessing and cursing, but I can advise you, choose life that both thou and your seed may live. Look up. The first revelation here is that decisions do not affect you alone whatever decision you make will affect you and everyone under your care biologically spiritually sociologically choose life so that you and your seed may live there are consequences that our decisions provide not just for us but for everyone connected to us. Write this down please. Decisions decide destiny. It is true. This is not just some sociological cliche. Our destinies are decided not just by the will of God, but by the decisions that we take. We live in a world where advancement happens at the instance of choices and decisions. Our world is full of people today who made all kinds of choices with their lives. There are people in old age today, some celebrating their decisions and the choices they have made. Are we together? Some regretting the decisions and the choices they have made. One of the seven, when God created man, man as the highest of his creation there are seven things god gave man one of it is the power to choose the power to choose from the day god gave man the power to choose it became scripturally incorrect for god to veto the will of man and impose things even at the expense of your eternal salvation god still allows you to choose as passionate as his love is towards man he didn't say no i love you too much you are you don't know what you are doing you're on your way to hell you must go to heaven no he gave you the power to choose a choice that even affects your eternal destiny god gave man the power to choose listen very carefully god will not stop you from making your decisions However, it is important for us to know that you do not choose consequences. You only make choices. It is the choices that choose the consequences. Please listen very carefully. You only have the power to make choices. You do not have the power to choose the consequences of the choices. A consequence is the resultant effect of a decision. Good or bad our world is full of people today blaming others for their lives we blame parents listen carefully we blame government sometimes we are right there is some legitimacy in what we are saying but most times we live in a in a sociological context where irresponsibility is marketable if my father were serious, I would be this. If my mother were serious, agreed they were not the best. But we forget that God has given us the power to choose. And that your destiny does not move just at the decisions of others alone. You have the power to literally navigate yourself towards the path of life or the path of destruction using decisions. 
I've shared this here as a story. I read about it years ago. There were two gentlemen who were the sons of a drunkard. Very serious drunkard. And one of the sons got frustrated because of the lifestyle of his father. And then he went on to live a very wayward life. Very responsible. Lived his life the way he wanted. Then the other one decided to be challenged by the lifestyle of his father. And he said, no, my life would not be like this. He made a decision. Fortunately, he found a very serious mentor who guided him. Eventually, he went on to be a very successful person. Then one day, the brothers were brought together and they were interviewed. Brother A, why did you become such an irresponsible person? Here was his response. He said, did I have any choice? No, no, how did he put it? He said... Um, it was a justification he was trying to bring like my father was the cause for instance my father was the cause for my irresponsibility they asked the gentleman what motivated you to become such a responsible person and he said my father was the cause same reason that made someone to head on to become a failure in life it was the same reason that motivated another person Another example, someone was coming into a new territory and when he came in as he was passing, he met a farmer and he said, sorry, I hear that this land is full of armed robbers and dangerous people and the farmer said, you are right and the guy passed. He continued farming. Another person came into the city and he said, I hear there are loving people here, very empathetic and the farmer said, you are right and the man passed. For both questions, the question of armed robbers and wicked people, and the question of good people and sensible people, the farmer's response was, you are right. That means all of them are in the same domain. It depends on what you see. It depends on who told you what. Are we together? Decisions decide destiny. That means you can make up your mind. That you are going to be great you can make up your mind that i will live for jesus it's a decision do you know listen we sometimes as men of god we teach people as though their brains are empty they don't do anything with it it's just the holy spirit who says say this or demon says say this no god gave man an independent mind that is rational and can take decisions that are respected in the realm of the spirit the parable of the prodigal son remember the bible says he came to himself he didn't say the holy ghost spoke to him he didn't even say the demon punished him the gentleman came to himself and this is what he said he said how many hired servants does my father have and i am here eating with the swine i will arise my decision i will take that risk and go to my father and i will say father i have sinned against heaven and against you i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants the moment he took that decision the father started honoring his decision too they met on the way not in the house decisions are powerful there are people today who have stepped into the realm of prosperity because they got fed up and they said in the name of jesus christ i have found from scripture that as a believer i have the advantage of walking in the blessing i have made up my mind that things must change there are some of you here who went to school not because somebody advised you you looked at all your siblings and you said you know what all i have is five thousand naira i will find myself to zaria or anywhere even if i can only do two weeks let me die there and you took that step and heaven backed you today you have a phd today you have an msc decisions are powerful there are people who became serious with god because they made up their minds the holy ghost assisted them yes but they made up their minds that my life must count i do not want that at the end of my days i would sit down and have to write epistles and say be serious in your youth there are many elderly people today whose lives are full of regret when you sit with them it's just stories of regret oh i remember when so 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 came to nigeria in the 1960s we were the ones who were laughing at those who were serving god look at us now your life can become a motivation or a warning 
your life can become a key or a padlock depending on the decisions that you make hallelujah i know one of one young lady who was doing well and eventually i think somewhere along the line uh the uncle who used to sponsor her made up his mind and said he was tired you know the resources were not there maybe like 17 18 and then um they encouraged her to get married and one thing led to the other and the news got to me and then i told her i said what do you want to do and she said i want to marry and i looked at her I was almost carrying my hand to say, you, 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 who gave you that motivation for a foolish decision? I said, no, you continue what you are doing. I will assist, but you have to decide to be serious. Can I tell you this? It is very risky to support people who have not decided. Very risky to support people who have not decided someone who has not decided to be serious with god you are wasting your time buying bibles buying concordance paying his transport to go to church and he's frowning at you and insulting you is you don't give people food because they have a mouth you give people food because they are hungry are we together God is challenging us with this that our destinies are not dependent on the sociological context that we found ourselves our destinies are not even dependent on the disadvantage that surrounds our lives in as much as we know it now that he told Abraham from where thou art not where you want to go where you are lift up your eyes you can lift up your eyes from where you are and make a decision you can make a decision that the next three years of my life it will take a telescope to look at where i'm coming from because of the level of speed consistency and advancement there are many young people who have not made a decision to be serious with their lives they are just growing old they are not doing anything with their lives 40 years you say i'm a last born and they are not doing anything i'm challenging you in love Have you gotten a job? Well, you know the way Nigeria is. I just submitted. I saw something online. I, don't, I wasn't even sure. Somebody called me. I will apply. You've not made a decision. You can make a decision that every day if I have not prayed, my eyes will not sleep. It's a decision. Every day if I have not opened my Bible, I must make contact with this scripture, not out of religion, out of revelation. I have discerned the profitability of the word of God. You can make a decision that every day I must, I must ensure that knowledge, truth enters my ears before I sleep. You can make a decision that I will destroy wastage from my life. You can make a decision that I'm going to live a coordinated and orderly life. Comb your hair, polish your shoe, be responsible. No sagging jeans, no acting like a thief and an armed robber. It's a decision. You can make up your mind from, from this day forward. I want to be serious. Goodbye to those friends. What happened to you? Oh, you have become a, 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 a what they call it, Mother Mary, or you have become this. Yes, I have become it. A decision. There are people today in prison cells all over the world prophets apostles business people there are people today respectfully speaking in the grave who had no business going there because of decisions friends can help you make bad decisions parents and loved ones can help you make bad decisions you have to ensure for you to reign in life your decisions must be consistent with scripture this is why it is important to know scripture because it guides your decision making process when your decisions are not referenced from and consistent with scripture there is no guarantee for a victorious life the power of choices That's the song. I've made up my mind. 
to go God's way for the rest of my life. Don't sing it if you don't believe it. I've made up my mind. To go God's way Some of you need to make a decision. My dear friends, I love you. But you people, I sincerely appreciate you, but you are committed to mediocrity. I respect your decision, but I'm not ready to benefit from that consequence. Therefore, in love, I am cutting out of this group of mediocrity to settle with God for a victorious life. Can I tell you this? Somebody who is 20 years old still has room to make mistakes and correct themselves. You who is 40 years old, now that is your, your friend. The person can afford to make mistakes and repent at 25. Are we together now? By the time you are 40 years old and you are doing the same thing a 20 year old person is doing. 10 years plus 40 you are 50. 20 years plus 40 you are 60. After the person misleads you, he will later repent and be serious at 30 and use the next 10 years under structured mentorship to make meaning out of his life. By the time he gets to where your confusion starts, he has been transformed. Listen to me, especially now I'm, I know that I'm speaking to everyone all across the world, but permit my bias. Let me speak to us who are of the Middle Beltan slash Northern origin. I say it with every sense of responsibility and respect. Our sociological context by default does not sponsor the requisite level of seriousness and determination it makes to excel. I'm not insulting. It's, uh, I'm part of this system. But through transformation and determination, you can choose to exempt yourself. Are we together? How can they lie, Sharia? You hear people say it. And people live all kinds of lives of mediocrity. Make up your mind. Where my father could not go, where my mother could not go, the same energy it takes to insult them is the same energy it takes to decide to be serious. Hallelujah. Someone can sit down and say, I didn't have the opportunity to have great parents, but I'm going to be responsible. I will not steal, I will not steal. He will go and open a small car wash. Father, this is what I'm doing as a token of my decision. And God will bless him. One day somebody will come to wash his car and say, young man, what do you do? He say, well, um, I, I, I don't I, I do have, what qualifications do you have? And maybe just say this and that and that. I, I, you look like a nice gentleman. Is it alright if I pick you to come and do something? And in six months his life has changed. Here's what we say to those people. You are lucky. You. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say one more time in the name of Jesus. I make up my mind. By the grace of God. That from tonight. I will excel. That from tonight. I will be visionary. That from tonight. I will go forward. I will advance. In the name of Jesus. I refuse to see challenges. I see a glorious destiny. And in partnership with the Holy Spirit. I will get there. Make up your mind. Stop all those excuses. You were insulting your parents from 20. Now you are 40. Insulting everyone. My father was a herbalist. At least he admitted he was a herbalist before he died. You who is not a herbalist. What have you done with the grace that was given to you? Nigerians, Africans, we blame everybody, including Jesus Christ. Blame him for dying for you. Blame him for blame your pastor. Blame you are blaming Jesus Christ when you blame the kind of shepherd he gave you. Oh, we are fasting again. Oh, this night vigil again. And you know where you are coming from. Please, in the name of Jesus Christ, make up your mind that you will make quality decisions. A decision to know God and love God. A decision to keep your destiny before you and to be serious. 
a decision to never let pain stop you. Champions are those who have mastered the art of conquering pain. You can wear it pain till it leaves you to move forward. Hmm. Yes, I may wake up in the morning. Yes, I may stay in that one bedroom flat for 10 years. But I refuse. I, I set my face like a flint. He said, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. I press towards the mark of the, of the high calling in Christ. Don't be ashamed of where you are. Don't be ashamed of the current level. Take the Gary with honor. Run away from a fake life. This kind of fake living. Don't fake what can be real. Be patient. If your friends come and all you have is a bottle of minerals and Gary, do not allow people come and push you into realms that you have gotten there by faith, but you are walking your salvation with fear and trembling to step there and experience. Don't allow wasters. Devourers can be men. They come into your life and push you to levels that you have not yet attained. They mock you for following process. At your level, you are still here. You are in one room and you feel embarrassed for being patient with God. Make up your mind. That I will walk the path of my destiny with honor. I will so Gary with honor while I pray. I will enjoy it. Lord, I give you praise because I will feed nations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, I will feed nations. While that is happening, you have only one trouser. Don't make the whole world know you have only one trouser. You carry your emotions and put on the trouser. And force us to know that's the only trouser you have. I don't need with honor. It is one trouser, but enjoy it now because you will miss it. Let me tell you this. Do you know why sometimes God allows us to pass through those things? Because you see, success is so magnetic. It takes the memory of where you are coming from to sustain you. The applause of men. You see, when you step into the palace, you almost become scarless. Even you can forget that you once were in the prison. So the memory of those things remind you. So that when success comes with its seduction, the Holy Ghost can use yesterday to say, be careful. Remember you once drank curry. Don't act as though, yes, it's good to walk in the newness of, the newness of mind, but not, it should not lead to foolishness. Fame can destroy Success can destroy. So the memory of where you are coming from can help you. The God who delivered me from the bear and the lion, that same God will give me the head of Goliath. But you must, you must have an encounter with those moments. If you've not met the bear, and the lion and you stand before Goliath you might not bring him down the power of decisions let me talk about two more can you spare me 10 minutes or so it was so strong in my heart while I prayed for this meeting all that the Holy Spirit kept putting in my heart is that God's people need to know that their decisions have implications We live lives that are very careless, consequence-free life. Someone calls you and says, I want to bless you. Come to PZ by 10. You stroll there by 12. He says, well, the blessing is not there again. No, no, well, even God understands what is there. There are many of us, there is no sense of consequence. What should I hurry for in life? Please don't. I'm not like that. By my nature, I, I take life easy. You will suffer. It's not a good. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a bad. That spirit is not the Holy Ghost. Carefree life. Which day are you going to go out of your parents' house? You are getting older. I will think about it one day. Very carefree life. You have to live with a sense of consequence. Okay? If I do not pray consistently for one month, what is the consequence? 
You are free to make that choice. But what is the consequence? If you like the consequence, then make the decision. If you are ready to face the consequence, make the decision. But if you are not ready to face the consequence, you must obtain grace from God. Many of us, God is speaking to us because this is the service when you need to make a U-turn over so many decisions in your life. It is a decision to look up to God. That God uses men, but help does not come from men. Help comes through men. But it comes from God. It's a decision to stop blaming uncles and aunties and you are angry with everybody and saying they are not even ashamed of themselves. They are forgetting about you. No. I lift up my eyes onto the hills. From whence cometh my help, he says. My help. I don't know where yours comes from, but my help cometh from the Lord who is the maker. He doesn't make heaven and earth alone. He makes men too. Hallelujah. After this service, you need to go back. Whilst you are preparing for miracle service tomorrow, make up your mind that I will begin to make quality decisions. Can I tell you something? You can make a decision to live healthy. It's a decision. A decision to live healthy is a serious decision. So when you have an option of all kinds of things that the devil tells you that the presence of these things mean wealth, you just remember, this decision plus 30 years, what does it equal? Hallelujah. Decisions. Someone said, he went for a meeting, he got up in the morning, and as soon as he got up in the morning, I think he was strolling out and then he saw Baba Deboye just walking and praying in tongues and doing his exercise and he looked at him and he was surprised and the man met him, prophesied to him and continued doing his exercise while praying in the spirit. That's a decision because he intends to live long. To choose life does not just mean I choose life. It means take the decisions that are pro-life. Are we together? Make up your mind today that in the name of Jesus Christ, I will make quality decisions towards my life. Let me give you five decisions that you will have to make if you want to excel. Maybe we should just write it. Five decisions. Number one, the decision to be serious with God is a very powerful decision you must make. A personal decision that I will be serious with God. My word study, my prayer, my fellowship, my spiritual growth is a decision that I make. Number two. The second decision is a decision to be transformed. Make up your mind and decide that I'm ready to replace every wrong paradigm every faulty belief system that I have no matter how it came from where it came from and how long it has been in my mind I'm ready to work on it we've done several teachings that touch on belief systems you can do well to get them listen to me no matter how born again you are the level of your enlightenment your paradigm can destroy your destiny the Bible says we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. Is that true? I told you, you know you are transformed when it is difficult to trace you to any earthly region. I shouldn't just look at you and say you are behaving like Yoruba people. Uh-huh. Igbo. Abi? You say, yes, I said that's how they behave. Or you are a northerner. From where? And I help you. Not by prophecy, by the implication of your character, your behavior. I help you suggest where you are coming from and get it with accuracy. If you are transformed, I should, I should be so shocked when you tell me where you are coming from, territorially speaking. Because you have embraced another set of values. A belief system that is far superior to any race or any culture on earth. The only place I should be able to associate with you is heaven. I should be shocked when you tell me you are Yoruba or you are Igbo. 
or you are Hausa, or you are South South, or you are American, or you are British. You mean it? Yes. Born and bred there? Yes. Ah, are you not the carpenter's son? But what was I doing at age 12? I was ensuring that I'll be transformed. So when Satan came believing he would meet the carpenter's son, he had one who already had it is written. It is written. That didn't come with his background. It is written was something he outsourced in the way. Oh, I know where you come from. The men are very irresponsible. Change that narrative through your life. The men are very angry. The men are this and that. The women are like that. Change that narrative. Do not be conformed to this world. It says, I beseech thee, brethren, Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. By the mercies of God, it says, that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable. He calls it your reasonable act of service. Then verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Is the Greek word aeon. The thinking pattern that comes with this system. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you think Zaria and leave Zaria, the limitation of Zaria will be on you. Are we together now? You can travel to America and yet in the realm of the spirit and in your mind, you are still in your village. Have you seen people like that? They left Egypt in one day. How long did it take Egypt to leave them? Every time they face something, Egypt shows up again. And God says, oh, I want to do so much with these people. Just because you are physically out of a territory, does not mean you are delivered from that territory. The word of God is the authorized channel for transformation. Be it unto me according to your word, according to your promises, I can stand secure. Will you have upon my heart? The truth that sets me free According to your word, O oh Lord Be unto me So from one room You turn to Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 And here's what it says to your destiny It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God To do and observe all that is written there it says that you will be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. I believe that right from where you are, God can lift you and give you a voice that the nations will hear without faking it right from where you are. Make a decision to be transformed, my dear brothers and sisters. Transformation does not come by impartation. There's no anointing for it. There's only grace that supports your diligence to buy the truth and to sell it not. It will cost you materials. It will cost you the study of scripture. You must invest in the truth. Make that choice to be serious with God and to sustain a superior belief. When the rich come and talk with you, even though you may not have five naira here, but you have the wealth of a superior understanding. The wealth of a superior understanding. Number three. The third decision that I want you to make with your life is the decision to be exceptionally valuable. Mm. The decision to be exceptionally valuable. The decision to be exceptionally valuable. I can break all this into separate studies. I've done a lot of them here. We're doing a refresher course here. To be valuable. Can I tell you this? For as long as you live in the realm of mediocrity, that is the realm of competition. That is the realm of bitterness. That is the realm of jealousy. That is the realm of envy. In fact, that is the realm of the flesh. There is a realm higher than those dimensions. Excellence by the Spirit. He says, O oh Lord our God, how excellent. 
His name is not only great, it excels. Make up your mind that you are going to be so valuable, it will be impossible for your generation to ignore you. Not from a carnal competitive standpoint, but brothers and sisters hear me, nobody will clap for you for nothing. People love you, but they love themselves too. And if there is nothing in your life that supports kingdom come, if there is nothing in your life that supports the betterment of the life of men, you will be at the lower levels of life. Are we together? It's a decision I made with my life that I will be exceptional. I don't have the assignment and I don't have it as a goal to know everything. But the areas where God has called me to function, the areas where I need to be competent as far as my personal progress and kingdom come is concerned, I made up my mind that I would triumph over pain until I get to a level of mastery and competence. Someone sent me a text and said, Apostle, you are so good. I said, compared to what? Compared to what? Compared to my background? Compared to those around me? No. My reference is scripture. My reference is Jesus. My reference is that standard. This is what makes you global. Listen to me. Listen to me. We live in a world of mediocrity where even as a failure, they start clapping for you. This is the level of mediocrity that is in our sociological context. Where nothing has started but the applause have started already. No. You must challenge yourself under God. Make up your mind to be valuable. Don't celebrate mediocrity. Believe me, it will not take you far. If you are a worship minister, make up your mind that I will sing his praises to the nations in a way and manner that kings will be able to call me and they will be proud. The grace of God upon my life will bring such defense to the gospel that your incompetence will not become a reproach to the gospel. Believers are lazy people because of provisions like the grace of God, the anointing and the rest. So we excuse it and we are not diligent. God, even you, you know I didn't study as I'm coming to preach. But would it, make, would it have made any difference if I read? Is it not just your, your anointing that comes upon me? And you continue to do it until the day God lines all your destiny helpers. And you close the door of the next 10 years by yourself. Make up your mind that you are going to be competent. Don't say I'm in Zaria. Don't say I'm young. Don't, don't refuse those kinds of things. I'm a man of God. I agree. But who and who can place a demand on the grace of God upon your life and not be disappointed? Ministry ethics, zero. Proper understanding of the foundational doctrines of scripture, zero. The intelligence and even the psychology of communication, zero. There is a lot of work to do. I agree that you are a prayer warrior, but that's not the only key to excelling in ministry. You go back and learn the other rudiments that make for excellence. Before you receive the applause of men, study who is clapping for you first. If the devil is clapping, run away. If mediocres are clapping, Appreciate them, but settle down. But if champions clap, even if it's just once, let it be healing enough that you're making progress. Say in the name of Jesus, I make up my mind to be competent to excel. Are we together? Yes, sir. Make up your mind. If there is one person in this city who will be a reference as far as maybe tailoring and fashion is concerned, let it be me. Don't sit down and say, believers don't come to patronize me. The last time they came to you, what did you do? You take it as a challenge and go back and do your homework. Praise the name of the Lord. Are, are we blessed? Yeah. I returned one time from a crusade and a dear pastor friend was calling me just to comment on what he thought the Lord did in the crusade. And when he called me, he had a message playing. And he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm studying. He said, you are joking. 
I thought she just returned back to the room like an hour ago. I said, yes, sir. He said, you are studying. I said, exactly right. Ah, with all that happened there, and I told him something I always say, nobody claps for you for the same thing twice. If they clap once, that's enough for that realm. You stay in that realm, you have received the applause once and for all. Champions are goers, forward thinkers. Those who win the Olympic as soon as they return, just a few months of rest, and they are it again. Reject mediocrity, my dear people. Reject mediocrity. You sang when they invited you in a church. You went off key. You didn't even remember how you started and how you finished. And someone outside, who is your relative? Your relative will tell you well done no matter what you do because they love you. But you must be honest and assess yourself. Not condemn yourself. I can be better. But this is not the best. Let me go back and do some work. You're listening. You're learning something. Try again. Then one day you become a master. It's masters that define their realities. They define their rewards. Nobody is going to bless you and follow you indefinitely. Please believe this. You know you are leading when someone is following you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. I know there's more that's found me. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. I know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more. Just sing it one time as a determination. We'll never Listen. Find out how results are produced. Find out how things work. Find out. How does a church grow? How do people excel? How does influence happen? How does grace come? How is it multiplied? The seed for an answer is a question. If you are not asking anything, you don't deserve an answer. Hmm. Hallelujah. I'm always asking questions. Asking the Holy Spirit, asking on common mentors, asking myself, asking the word, asking the wisdom of men that has been captured in materials. When you ask questions, an answer will come. How does this work? There has to be a way. Proverbs 2 18, verse 1. To desire a man having separated himself, the Bible declares, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. Apostle God is calling me to speak to kings. Then you must learn how to speak to kings. You don't speak to kings like you are speaking to prisoners. You must learn that art, the ability to speak to kings. Next decision. Make a decision. A very strong decision that you are going to have very strategic destiny relationships. Make a decision that you are going to have very strategic destiny relationships. Re destiny relationships that are intentional, not one that just happens. Intentional. Relationships that help you preserve your values. Relationships that challenge you to rise to the highest levels of your life. Relationships that provide a leverage. Be fruitful means be relational. Everything multiplies on the basis of relationships. Listen to me. 
if you categorize all men as the same in your life, wisdom is not at work in your life. You should be able to write who are the top five men in all honesty, who are the most useful individuals in your life so far. Who are the top five people who are deserving of your honor? Who are the top five people who are the greatest shoulders you can lean on? You cannot relate with everybody at the same level. No. Jesus had 72. Jesus had 12. Jesus had three. Jesus had one. There are people when it has to do with resourcefulness. They should always be there within your reach. There are people who may not be very resourceful, but they are incredibly dependable. You can depend on them. You can wake them 2 a.m. in the night and say, come and help me hold something. If you say things for me, they failed already. But show me what I will do. They will do it and stay there. You can't communicate the same level of honor to everybody. It's lack of wisdom. It's a decision I made with my own life, my dear brothers and sisters. Love everybody. Relate with everybody. Communicate a level of honor to everybody. But if you want to rise, you must be intentional and strategic. Who are the five people who inspire you spiritually as far as your friends and relationships are concerned if all your friends are poor broke ungodly unserious imagine imagine that if there are five people around your life who are visionless and unserious you didn't count well there are actually six Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He that walks with the wise, he doesn't have to desire to be wise. He that walks with the wise, the Bible says, he shall be wise himself. It says, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. Jesus fasted all night to choose 12 people. As Jesus, so filled with the Holy Ghost, and he fasted and prayed all night. Take the issue of relationships very serious in your life. Who, is, who are the few people you can depend on for prayer? There's an attack in my life. I can call you. Can we pray? Can we agree? If you don't have this in your life, you will not go far. For many of you, you will destroy your life because the moment you are under pressure, whoever is available is the voice you talk to. It is not wisdom. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. He knew the right person to talk to. Rabbi, forget what we said in the day. We know that you are a man sent from God. For no man can do these things except God be with him. Are we together? Make up your mind. Make up your mind. The Lord says, sow 5,000 Naira. You just sit and say, who do I sow to? A, B, C, D, and it stops at any name and you just, no, there's no discernment. There are people in my life who are ever deserving of honor. It's intentional. I know the grace and I know the role that they play in my life and my destiny. It's a decision you have to make. Woe betides a man who will look left and right and find out you are alone. The Bible says it is not good for man to be alone. You've heard me say it. It's not just talking about a woman. That when man is alone, it is risky. Because two are better than one. Then it says a threefold cord cannot be easily broken. That you must trust God to have at least one or two genuine strategic friends in your life. By covenant, not emotion. Covenant is higher than emotion. Emotions vacillate. I like this. I don't like this. Covenant, you are bound by a revelation. We die together. We stand together. This is the principle of Jewish people. And this is what many non-Christians use. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? 
is there somebody in your life today that if you desperately need money like you des you know that i'm not talking of borrowing you actually can go to the person and say please you know i'm not lazy there is a situation here and the person can actually help you sincerely if nobody likes you that much pray for both favor and help us believe what i'm telling you you may think i'm just entertaining you but the days that come and as you rise you will see the potency of this if you have to work for everything by yourself you're in trouble there must be somebody who sees your life worthy enough to connect to if nobody wants to come close to you something is wrong with you something should happen to your life that someone should be able to look at you and say friendship is worth it with you don't just pray for destiny help us pray to be one first it's a decision you have to make a great decision many of the doors that will open to you in this life will open by relationship woe betides you when you stand and you are watching the corridors of your destiny with many people moving and there is nobody there who your life is worth their attention there are people who may not have physical cash but they have a wealth of relationships there is somebody always remembering them always remembering them for good i remember five years ago what you did come and i will lift you i re can i bless you no i don't need that blessing do you have a son or anybody around you that i will bless there are people in political positions today not because of their competence relationships took them there even your spiritual growth is dependent on relationships believers hear me the easiest way to rise and succeed in life is through relationships it's a decision you have to make in your life if i ask you mention five of your friends do you have an answer or your answer is per week or per season if they pay salary it changes there's no salary it changes if god opens a door it changes you are you are you are moving on a time bomb i've had the honor and the privilege of interacting with a few fathers of faith in this nation by the grace of god and one of their secrets is that their lives are bound in such secured covenants of relationships with a few friends they have they know someone's car can spoil and before he fixes it the friend will send his car and say he should be using it until and later it can even be you will not even know who is the real owner of the car i know someone whose house burnt before he got there true story his friend had moved his things to one of his houses and said over my dead body that your house is if you don't have this kind of people in your life hear me i'm, I'm giving you a prayer point go back and pray before you punish your children and your children's children there must be somebody in your life who believes in you enough to die for you greater love had no man than this than a man laid down his life for his friend when i was in secondary school there were friends called ff a friend for food when they visit you you know this visiting day that they do all of a sudden wicked seniors who flog you every time suddenly become nice and cautious because your parents are there and some of these dangerous people may even be your own family members someone wants to lift you somewhere and it's your own family member that will say no he's the last born don't lift him and yet will come out and laugh with you and say how are you may god keep increasing you oh may god give you genuine people i pray for you in the name that is above all names may god who is the helper of men bring sincere people to your destiny sit down it's a decision you have to make one last decision for the sake of time and then we'll pray 
I pray that the words that I communicate to you tonight would help to shape your destiny. That it will give you a reason to think this night. Hallelujah. The last decision that I encourage you to make tonight is the decision to be empowered. The decision to be spiritually empowered. My head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed with fresh oil. My head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed with fresh oil the decision listen to me the decision to contact genuine authentic spiritual power to the degree that empowers you to represent the purposes of the kingdom without shame is a decision you must make in your life Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth not just that he was anointed look at the extent to which God anointed him he went about under the influence of that anointing the Bible declares doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil believe me when I tell you the anointing truly makes you a blessing The capacity to provide supernatural solutions to the lives and the destinies of men. The ability from the spirit to dislodge the powers of darkness. To ward off the arsenals of hell. The ability to take advantage of the grace and the supply of the spirit and move destinies forward is a worthy decision. It takes more than just quoting scripture. It takes more than just having head theological knowledge. Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. It takes even more than just a decision to go forward. There must be an engracing of the spirit. A smearing of that oil from heaven that can come upon a man and distinguish you. Turning you, not just to a worker of miracles, but to a sign and a wonder yourself. He says, I am the children that the Lord has given me. We are for signs and even for wonders in Israel. I'm glad that I made this decision many years ago. And I thank the Lord God of heaven for the staying power to push and endure. It still remains a pursuit, but today I look back and I'm humbled and even broken. That God granted me the grace to stay and contend for spiritual empowerment. Be ready for empty pews. If there is no genuine anointing. Be ready for an empty life. If there is no genuine anointing. There is a hungry world that is desperate to see Jesus revealed. To see Jesus manifested. More than just the communication of the talk of men. Problems are real. Challenges are real. And most of them are beyond the realm of intellect. They are beyond the realm of science. It is his divine power that gives us all things. The giver. Is his divine power. Oh, God has called me to walk in the healing ministry. I beg you in the name of Jesus and I beseech you. Stay until you contend for grace that is genuine. That can really truly heal the sick. Tomorrow, several thousands of people will be here on this ground. Several thousands others will be connecting around the world. Hoping and trusting that God will come through for them. We can make our boast in the Lord and say, come God will heal you. Come God will deliver you. But will it really happen to them? Someone right now is depending not just on Jesus Christ alone, but depending on your level of contention for grace. For their miracle. You literally have the power to make someone's challenge one day left. And it's gone. He says to appoint unto them that mourn. You can set a date for their liberty.
What greater expression of love and kindness is more than that? God is, God is calling you into the ministry of wealth and abundance. More than just your knowledge and sense of finances and business, do you really have the grace that empowers people? I became a spiritual archaeologist. I took my Bible and I sat down. And I said, oh God of heaven, please do not send me with just a salmon. My world needs more than a salmon. Do not send me with just a good heart. My world needs more than a sincere heart. Do not send me with more than just a kind heart. The world needs more than character. The world needs more than a sincere heart. There must be an investment of the spirit. Power from on high. Genuine power that comes upon a life and leads you to a level where your life becomes a sign and a wonder. Where when people behold you, they begin to rejoice because they know. When they met Jesus, they were happy. They knew their predicaments had come to an end. I continue to pray and challenge myself by the Spirit that God will help me to rise to that level in the Spirit where as I stand and I look at people's situation, I can rejoice and cry with them. And say, I know that an end has come. Every time they met Jesus, they rejoiced. If you were the widow at Nain, and you were on your way to go and bury your last child, if you saw Jesus, he represented hope. This is my pursuit. So while you clap for me and say, Apostle, thank you for what you are doing. My mind is stayed on that target. Lord, we must get to a point where we heal nations in a day. We must get to a point where we bring continents and territories to their knees for Jesus in one day. We must be able to dislodge the powers that sit, not just over families, but over territories. Bring down these horns in one day. There is a dimension of grace that can supply that result. Until we are there, we are not yet there. This is my motivation. I don't listen to the uploads of men for too long. Thank you. Thank you for this. And that's it. We had the miracle service in Abuja. And I mean, I cannot begin to tell you the tremendous testimonies. Not just there online. The mighty testimonies. And when I went back after rolling before God to tell him thank you. I said, Father, thank you. I am grateful, but I'm not satisfied. There was still one person in that auditorium who was not healed. There was still one destiny that was still left. Because of that one person, I forget the things that are behind. Don't just say, I prayed. Five people were healed. Out of how many? Ten people were delivered. Out of how many? That your life will be such a blessing. Your showing up is like the coming of, the, of His Majesty Himself. The lifting up your voice is like the opening of the gates of men's destinies. Brothers and sisters, until we get there as a ministry and as individuals, let us not be complacent with what God is doing. Thank God for what God is doing with Koinonia all around the world. But do not fall into the seduction of greatness. The enemy of best is better. Better looks very comfortable, but we must keep pressing. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your glory. With everything, with everything, we will shout for.
that ye are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, the Bible declares. It says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. Then it says that we run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the Bible declares, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him, the Bible says he endured the cross and despised the shame. Prayer point number one. Father, my life must count. I obtain grace. Grace from heaven. Lift your voice and pray. I make a decision that my life must count. As far as kingdom come is concerned, my life must count. Make sure you are praying. the Lord. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I set before you life and death. You're going to open your mouth right now and choose life. Choose life means choose prosperity. Choose life means choose longevity. Choose life means choose greatness. Choose life means choose a destiny of impact. Lift up your voice and pray. Declare, declare by the Spirit of God. Shake up every limitation, cultural limitation, tribal limitation, territorial limitation, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. I make decisions that are pro life. I make decisions that are pro business. I make decisions that are pro spirituality.
time is up, but I want you to turn, listen to me please. Turn this song into a prayer. The Holy Ghost is called a helper. I have many things to tell you, he said, but he cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. The helper. Lift your voice and declare your need for his ministry afresh. The ministry of signs and of wonders. The ministry of genuine spiritual empowerment. 